Ohio to see no Tori from Toppy Wrestling, actually. Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Tori Talk Wrestling. Today's episode, we are going over our top five managers of all time with a special guest that you'll see soon. But first, we have some honorable mentions. Uh, by the way, I'm wearing my wrestling manager's clothing because managers <laughs> always dressed fancy like. <laughs> and this is my fancy shirt, and it's casual. Do you look good? <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. On our honorable mentions, before we get to our list, my I have two honorable mentions, and she has two. My number two is a person that I think really captures the essence of what a real man should be, and that's Mr. Dan Lambert at AEW. Mm-hmm. Please come back, Dan Lambert. Please come back to television. I miss you. Oh, Did you that's think he was entertaining? He was funny because he was so problematic. Yeah, he's problematic. He's awesome. He's pretty funny. I like watching. Mm-hmm. And then I would say, classy Freddie Blassie is an honorable mention. I have got to be honest. I don't really watch a lot of stuff that old. I mainly watch modern stuff. But I mean, if you know who somebody is, even through the test of time, you can say that they made a mark. You know. And they made a movie where they ate breakfast with Andy Kaufman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My number one honorable mention, uh, most people know him as Dirty Dutch Mantel, but everyone else is going to know him as Zeb Coulter. And he says, We the people. We the people. Or save the trees because he's the Lorax. He does look like the Lorax. <laughs> uh, however, he's a brilliant, brilliant man when it comes to wrestling. And I, I wish Tony Khan would hire him. Mm-hmm. Who is your number one honorable mention? Uh, who would also be Mom's number one. Smart Mark Sterling. Woo, 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 woo. She got a crush on him. I do a little bit. I think I, think I like him a little bit. <laughs> we have a future honorable mention by the name of Mr. JBL. And that's John Bradshaw Layfield. I hope I said that right. That's yeah, okay. you did. Okay. And he's got a great mouth for talking and wrestling. He's got a great mind for wrestling. So I think he's going to do really good as a manager. And they finally found mm-hmm. someone that is bigger than him. That's the problem with a lot of people that are managers. Uh, one of mine on my list had that problem where you had to find someone that you're not bigger than. Mm-hmm. And then my dishonorable mention, our dishonorable mention, that we think is just too overhyped, I guess, is Stokely Hathaway. He's not, ooh, I want to get a hold of you and punch you type of Mickey Magic. I, don't, I just, whenever you see me, just go, I just don't like you. <laughs> and it's not hate. It's, yeah. you're not angry at him. You mm-hmm. don't hate him. You just want to change the channel when he's on. And mm-hmm. we do. So there's mm-hmm. your little tip, Tony Khan. We change the channel when he comes on. Yeah. Well, maybe he can get better. Hopefully maybe. Okay, now we're going to get on to our top. Five. You're number five. My number five. Put together a faction in Dallas that always had a monster and a wrestler and a it made some stars in it, and it was called Devastation Incorporated. The manager was named Skandar Akbar. Did a, a Arabic gimmick. He's from Texas, but he... You know, That's weird. <laughs> well, he was an instant heel. Well, my number five is Bobby the Brain Heenan, which, you know, like I said with Freddie Blassie, I don't really watch that many old stuff, old wrestling stuff, but, I mean, it, he's iconic. He could talk, so yeah, he's my number five. And he was a great commentator. Mm-hmm. My number four would have to be the sensational queen, Sherry Martell. And she, when you saw her manage someone, you knew instantly that person was either a star or going to be a star. Mm-hmm. You know, they put her with the Macho King, and she would take bumps, and she would do promos, and she would give interviews, and she was involved in the match. Uh, then she loved Macho King. Went to DiBiase for a little bit, and then she went and managed some guy by the name of Sean Mick, Mickle, Mickle, Sean, Michaels. Sean Michaels. Maybe that's how you say it. He became a nobody. Uh, yeah. Then she left there, went to WCW and managed a tag team Har, Har, Harlem, Harlem something. Harlem Heat. Yeah, maybe that's it. So she managed a bunch of nobodies. Oh wait, no, she made them stars just by her presence there. You knew that that person was a somebody. My number four is Vicky Guerrero. Excuse me! I can't do it right, but, you know. Excuse me! Mm-hmm. Something That's like better. That. 
The original Karen of wrestling, as you would say. Very good character, and it worked. Mm-hmm. Okay, what did people think about her behind stage, though? She's actually really nice in real life. Everybody loved her. Yeah. I, I've never heard anybody say anything bad about her. Mm-hmm. But everybody hates her. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> uh, but they don't hate her in real life. Yeah. My number three is, it's me, it's me, it's DDP. You know, he originally tried to be a wrestler, and he... He hurt his knee again, and he just bombed out and couldn't do it. So he thought, you know what? I can talk. So he sent this tape to AWA, and they were like, okay, bring a couple of those guys on that tape. Come up here. You got a great mouth. We're going to put you all to work. And he's like, okay, here's a problem. None of the guys in my tape are really wrestlers. I just mm-hmm. got some bodybuilders to come in and stand there while I talked. But that got him in the door. Then he ends up leaving AWA, going to WCW, managing the Freebirds. And this is where I said the JBL thing was a problem. He was bigger than both Freebirds at the time. You can't have a manager that's bigger than the talent. Okay, that just, it doesn't work. So then they put him with uh, two other guys managing them. Uh, Vinny Vegas and uh, the Diamond Stud. Hmm. They called him the Diamond Exchange. Let's see. Did they go on to do anything in their careers? Yes. Oh, that's right. That's Hall and Nash, the Outsiders. Now you know why DDP was the first WCW guy to get over on the NWO, because they kind of owed him that. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to cut... To Cubs Adventures. Thank you for being our special guest. Hey, everyone. This is Steve Wynup from Cubs Adventures, and Tori has asked me to... Um, rank my number one ringside manager of all time, and I think I'm going to have to go with uh, the mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. Um, he, he's always, when you think of wrestling, you think of Jimmy Hart running around with that bullhorn in his hand. Uh, he just a uh, great character, um, always brought everything to life and uh, got a good crowd, crowd reaction. Uh, number two, maybe my... Uh, Honorable mention uh, would be Bobby the Brain Heenan. That's another classical guy right there. Really funny. Both these guys did great jobs in, in a great era of wrestling. So, anyway, thanks, Tori, for having me on here. Y'all make sure you like, sub- subscribe, and uh, put some comments down there over who is your favorite. Thanks. Thank you, Stephen, for your recommendation. Because that's actually my number three is Jimmy Hart. He's a great manager, mouth of the south, icon that even composed a lot of the wrestlers' theme songs. Including? Shawn Michaels, which Sherry actually sang, I'm just a sexy boy, sexy boy! <laughs> and that's weird to sing on a YouTube channel, but... Yes. <laughs> but I did it, so we're just going to do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, what is my... No, you're number two. My number two is a guy that hails from Halstead Street in Chicago. Playboy, Gary Hart. Now, a lot of people don't know who Gary Hart and Skandar Akbar are. I got that. Go on YouTube, look them up later. But Gary Hart was actually the brains behind the whole Dallas Territory. And truth be told, people didn't know this until Gary Hart was about to pass away, that he revealed the secret that Fritz Von Erich did not actually have any wrestlers at Dallas. They all went through what was called the Dallas Booking Office, which was run by Gary Hart. And Gary Hart is one that came up with all the storylines, the the feuds, everything for Dallas was Gary Hart. And uh, I've never heard one person say a bad word about Gary Hart. He's done nothing, but he does nothing but try to help the talent get over. Mm-hmm. So that's why he's my number two. My number two. It's Paul Bear. Oh, Undertaker! <laughs> I mean, obviously, this is iconic. You guys know I love The Undertaker. I love war. I mean, I love managers, so why not put it, right? And he was a legit manager. He, and he was a legit mortician. He yes. Was. He was an actual mortician. When he worked at Dallas uh, under the name Percy Pringle, mm-hmm. he was a mortician that just loved wrestling and wanted to be involved in it. So... <laughs> It worked out well for him. That's a weird combination. Now, now I'm going to backtrack here. And Whenever I say someone is a real manager, that applies to a handful of people on this list, not everybody. Uh, real managers 
arranged the talent's travel, hotel, took care of their pay, negotiated with the office, did everything for the talent. They were a legit manager. And Paul Bearer was a legit manager for The Undertaker and Kane and whoever else he was working with. Uh, Jimmy Hart was, too. Yes. Who else was on your list? Uh, my number one. Oh, okay. <laughs> and my number one. The man that made everyone hate him so bad. He carried a tennis racket. You might know him as Mr. James E. Cornett. But on a wrestling level, I think he's one of the smartest guys that's ever been in wrestling. And the guy could get heat. And he gets the opposite kind of heat than Stokely Hathaway. Mm-hmm. He gets the kind of heat where you want to get a hold of him and mm-hmm. you want to punch him. You want to shut him up. Mm-hmm. That little mama's boy. You, I, I, can't, I might not be able to beat Stan Lane and Bobby Eaton, but I know if I got a hold mm-hmm. of that Jim Cornette, I could whoop him. Mm-hmm. And that's what the whole thing was. That's what made him the greatest hill manager of all time is because you know if you got a hold of him, you'd hurt him. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you have a number one, don't you? Yes, my number one. Ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Is Paul Heyman. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. That does not sound like that. But anyway, I mean, I mean, this is more iconic to my generation than the others. I mean, because he did it from like, 90s to now, pretty much. So, I pretty much watched like the later half of his career growing up. And I mean, he can get heat wherever he wants. I mean, he did ECW, so those were both really good things. So, and he started out feuding against Jim Cornette mm-hmm. in WCW. They both had a Midnight Express, so it was it was interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I like about him is he's also a legit manager. He has actually handled most of Brock Lesnar's business dealings with WWE and other things. When Brock was at UFC, he worked with for Brock at UFC. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he's a legit manager. And it just so happens he's also one of the greatest talkers ever in the business. Mm-hmm. And our truth is going to throw him over that top rope at the mm-hmm. Royal Rumble. Paul Heyman. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got to explain why he did that. Because Brock Lesnar and our truth made it bad that or truth couldn't make Brock Lesnar, Lesnar laugh in the ring, so he didn't know what he was going to say, so he just went in there and was like, and I know you will go flying over that top rope, Paul Heyman. <laughs> <laughs> and he laughed, so. We're big Our truth fans, by the way. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks for watching. If you have a favorite manager, comment down below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Bye! What? Yeah. Tori Housing. I have two YouTube channels. One is Tori Does Everything, and the other is Tori Talks Wrestling. You're the best. Have a great birthday. Love that Dan Oh, yes. Very good. Thanks for watching. Bye. And Tori now has merch. Go check it out at bonfire.com. Link in the description and under the About tab. Bye.